Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Head Crack After Hours is one of the most interesting people in the game right now. And you know, in a, in a world right now where everybody has to be like label and name specific, I don't even know what to say right now, but Amaya Scott is in the building. What is poppin'? Hey, Amaya. <laughs> hey, Mr. Head Crack. Hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, if it was a copy, I'm head crack. That's booty crack. Uh, you know the, no, but I'm tight crack. <laughs> Hello. Foul, foul. <laughs> Thank you for having me, though. No, um, like in all seriousness, um, I knew that this was going to be one of the fun ones. So yeah. I was looking forward to it. Mm. No, I was excited about you coming in because oh, like, yeah? there's so much to talk about. You're like, you know, you're like a multi-layer cake. It's not just the... It's not just... The, the, the transgender mm-hmm. thing it's not just the acting thing mm-hmm. it's the things that you stand for stood for and are about to do as well yes. yeah but you took the jelly out of mine honey so now nah, it ain't no good cake Gary don't start <laughs> your shit okay <laughs> so you're on one of the most popular shows on TV right now which yes. is Star. Star and you get to play with one of the dopest people in the world like you know like Queen Latifah. Who she, doesn't love Queen Latifah? She's amazing. And to play my mother, I mean, it's just to be so fortunate. This was uh, my first acting experience. So to have her take me under her wing, um, to learn things from her, I mean, she's just, I really couldn't even put into words how great it is. It's such a blessing. Now, your character is named Cotton. Uh-huh. How did they get Cotton? Where did that name <laughs> come from? Well, you would have to talk to Lee Daniels. Mm-hmm. But from what I do recall, he and Mariah Carey have an inside joke. I think mm-hmm. that one calls one kitten and one calls one Cotton. And most of Lee's characters come from people that he knows in his life. So he kind of pays homage to them. So I believe that that's where my name came from. Got you. Now, when you look at the lineup of the people that be on the show, like, it is one of the most littest cast. Oh, yeah. On TV. I mean, you got, uh, you know, my man, um, why am I drawing the blank right? You got Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> we have Lenny Kravitz, Naomi Campbell, Benjamin Bright. We have Queen Latifah, Brandy, Patti LaBelle. Ben Vereen is going to join us. We, I mean, it, like, the list goes on and on. Now, what is it like working with Lenny Kravitz? He's amazing. Um, he, he he worked a lot more first season. Mm. Such a humble spirit. Such a cool guy. You know, he's on the phone talking with me. Like, I was FaceTiming my mom, and she really loves him. And they're on the phone talking about gumbo and stuff like Whoa. that. So, I mean, like, just imagine how humble he is. Yeah. Now, you can be completely honest with us. Okay. You know, having seen him up close in person. Right? Okay. He's a time traveler, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like, this dude looks he the same age. way he did when he yeah. came out, like, back in the 80s. Yeah, like, I think there's a little secret fountain somewhere, but oh, I'm going to find yeah. it for us, Gary. Mm-hmm, <laughs> honey. Him and his daughter and his ex-wife, uh, baby mama, Lisa Bonet. Oh, yeah. Because Lisa and her daughter look exactly alike. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, but I try to find um, Helen Willis in um, Lenny, but I just never find her. It's in the hair somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> the cakes. So not only are you an actress on a popular show, but, you know, the things that you stand for and the things that you represent. Yeah. Um, it's tough being a minority in this business. Yes. It's tough being a black minority specifically. Yes. It's tough being a female. Yeah. Even tougher to be a transgender. Yeah. And there's some things that were thrown your way that you was like, nah, I'm cool on doing that, that the average person would have like completely jumped at. Case in point, Real Housewives of Atlanta, I think they mm-hmm. wanted to do something with you and you was like, nah, I'm good. Like, I think that it just didn't, we know when things fit and don't fit. And I had a great experience um, during that whole taping and casting portion. Um, I, like, I met um, some great people. Um, I started some great relationships, but it just wasn't for me at that time. Really? Yeah, like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think I was 26 or 27. I didn't have much in common with the ladies. So, though, we, uh, like, we were very nice and polite. And I, I mean, like, it just was not the fit for me. So, and, instead of trying to force it to fit. And then you were young and wild then. Uh, here you go. Here you go, Gary. <laughs> I, know I was, you. I was younger, and I don't think that. Oh, thank you. They just jealous. You know the girls have a mind of their own. Okay. But yes, I was just young then, and it just wasn't uh, um, my fit. And I think that that goes to show that you don't have to walk through every open door. Um, what's meant for you is for you. And clearly something else was meant for me. Now, clearly with this show, you are in it to win it. Oh, yeah. You know, the show, the show is still trucking on strong. Y'all took a long extended hiatus between, like, the beginning of the new season uh-huh. and now. Like, you know, was there any particular so- source of sight for the holdup or that's how it was planned? No, like, I think that that's how it always goes. We always, we do, um, uh, we're blessed enough to have, like, 18 episodes. 
per season. So they chop it in half. We do nine, we take a break, and then we come back for nine. Got you. So Amaya, do, I mean, and I'm sitting here talking to you and looking at you, and I know you and I have some similar experiences. Yeah. But do you just feel lucky? Um, yes, I do. Like, um, well, not even so much lucky. I feel blessed. I feel that too. I feel extremely blessed. I feel extremely favored. Um, the story usually doesn't go this way. Exactly. So to be the difference, to be the exception, I mean, yeah. Because I tell, you know, friends, but I'm like, girl, every girl have her own thing. Yeah. You know, honey, what's good for you might not be good for me and vice versa and stuff, but it's just a, a blessing that you could do what you do, honey, make your money and get paid to be you. Yeah. I, um, I'm like, I'm still affected by the, I like the wow factor of it all. Like, though we're on season three, like, I go to work and sometimes I am completely shocked. Like, wow, like, this is my life. Exactly. L like, this is my job right now. Exactly. And it is, you know, and I think, um, well, not even I think I know. Like, I know that I deserve it. You know, like, I've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. um, um, I've dealt with a lot. Had you asked me 10 or 15 years ago, like I would not have even thought that I would have been here now. So that's the thing. Not only one of my dreams came true, but they all came true. Um, my first priority was to become or to uh, like evolve into the person that I knew that I was. And I didn't even think that that was possible. So to not only do that, but then to be able to enjoy work and to get work. And I mean, yeah, like my dreams just continuously come through and I'm so thankful for that. And that's God. No, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Now, when you think about things that drive people, yeah. Um, you know, some people are driven by the dark things that happen to them mm -hmm. that they want to push through and uh and and be the best they can be because of that. Or some people are driven by different things. They want money, they want fame. Like what's your driving point? Um my driving point is honestly stability and it's not like money, like I want a lot of money so I can go on shopping sprees and take trips. I want to make sure that my family is okay. I want to make sure that my parents are okay. I have older parents and I'm an only child. Really? Oh, yes. Yes, my father is over 70. My mother is approaching. And, like, I feel like it's my, like, and they gave me a great childhood, a great upbringing. And even if they didn't, I still um, don't want my parents to struggle or to worry. I don't want my father to work beyond the time that his body is able to. Like, I, like I want to make sure that we're okay. So that's what drives me. Like everything else is just extra, but this is, you know what I mean? Real life going on right now. So are they still in your hometown? Yes, they are. They're in New Orleans. Yeah. Do you miss it? Um, Yes, I do. But I feel like Atlanta has uh, much more opportunity. Absolutely. And I feel like um, for me to take advantage of all the opportunities that me being here is for the best. Now, now when you look at this year, 2019 that we're in right now, mm -hmm. It seems like more so than ever, things that were like taboo 10, 15, 20 years ago are a little bit more understood. And that's the key word, understood. Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily accepted all the way 100%, mm -hmm. but understood. When you're explaining your situation to your parents or your parents are putting things together, like how was that, that process of explaining that, hey, like, you know, even though I was born a boy, I wanted, you know, I, this is who I feel like I am. Right. Well, I was assigned male at gender. I, I, I'm at birth, so mm. I wasn't born a boy. Like, but that's that technical shit, and I understand right. what you're saying. Um, yeah, like it was difficult, yo. Like I was my father's only. Um, I was the third, so I, you know what I mean. I carried his name and stuff like that, and he took it pretty hard. And I think it was because it was new. Um, now we're making great progress, and I think that being trans and being visible, and there are many more opportunities, but. I mean, because I don't say how old I am, but you know what I mean? This was in a... a lady never tells her age. Right, Gary. How, I mean, well, you know, I'm 21. Oh, okay, up. exactly. And I'm right behind you. But, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I think that it was just difficult. And I think that I was honest and upfront about it. And at the end of the day, it's like I've just learned to live my life for me. So though I love my parents to death, I, I'm going to do what I have to do. Because we only get one life. Like, you only have one life to live. So it, it would have been selfish of my parents. Um, my dad specifically, because my mom has always stood by my side, and my father calls me princess now okay. to come full circle. Just how, so we how know. long did it take for that breakthrough to happen? Um, I think I started um, like seriously when I was 15, and when I had my first surgical procedure at 20, he drove out to Atlanta to visit me. So it was like five years that it was difficult, difficult, and now it's just been great, you know. 
because he saw it with his own eyes. And that's the thing. It's like people don't choose to be transgender. I mean, people may choose to act upon it or to let their, you know what I mean, true colors shine, but they don't choose that. No one would choose to be a part of the gay lifestyle. No one would choose to be criticized. And I think that that's where people kind of get it twisted. They that's a whole twisted. cross you guys you know, have yeah, to Yeah, like no one fight. would. I no a, one would. I worked out at a gym in um, Dallas and I had this white guy to him. He said, you know what, Gary? He said, I don't believe that when people talk about you um, you choose to be a certain... He said, because who would want to be something that nobody likes? Yeah. He said, you got two strikes before you walk out the door, you're black and gay. Exactly. So he said, do you choose to be that and nobody likes? Exactly. Liked? So, and this was from a white man, so, you know... But. It's the truth, but we can choose to be ourselves, and we can choose to not give a fuck. Wait, I'm sorry, can I say that? Oh, yeah, okay, I edit got a so yeah. strong. Okay. <laughs> but you understand what I mean? No, I get it. Like, you have to live life for you, and when I started to do that, I became so much happier. Like, I, beca- I, I, like I felt free, because so many times we get so caught up in trying to live our lives. I was trying to live my life for my father. Um, I was trying to live my life for my friends. Like, it's not about that. You can only do that for so long. Yeah. Because at <laughs> exactly. the point, you can torture yourself trying to be everybody you need to be for everybody else. Yeah. You know? But you look happy. Oh, yeah. And confident. Yeah. Like, you stepped through <laughs> here fast. Like, I felt like I was walking into an interrogation. Like, I mean, you know you what see, <laughs> You control the room. I so, mean, I... Well, yeah. Okay. So, now I was going to say, so, Amaya, so now that you're this big star, honey, do you still have the same friends or do you... Your friendship change? No, no, no. I'm very loyal um, to the core. But are they loyal? Oh, yeah. Um, because they wouldn't be here if they weren't. But my friends are my friends, and I'm so thankful that I was able to establish um, great relationships. I'm talking about, like, I have childhood friends. Like, my best friend and I have known each other for more than 16 years. Because mm-hmm. um, this industry is really, Gary, you know how it is, oh, baby. Yes, These I people do. are not your friends. Sure not, honey. They're your co-workers. They're your co-workers. They're your associates. They're people that you may um, have a great time with. And I think that that's the difference. You um, being able to party with someone does not make them your friend. I have great friends. I have great relationships. And it was all conceived prior to the madness. Like, who are you tightest with on Star? I can't say that. <laughs> um, one might get upset. Yes, oh, you ain't tied with me? Yes, yes, but with I, us today. yes, but I love all of them, to be honest. Um, like, I love those three girls. Like, they're my little sisters. Um, of course, I love Miss Lawrence. That is my sister. I mean, my mom is Queen Latifah. Like, it's not even me holding back. How can I say that when everyone is so great, you know? And everybody's so dope. I didn't realize how dope the cast was. Uh, I got an ch- opportunity to visit the set twice. Uh-huh. And I'm just sitting, like, around. And it's like, yo, my man just got finished being dope on a new edition show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's, you know, Diana Ross's uh, yeah. you know, uh, kid. You know, like, there's just... And everybody's talented in their own right outside of just the world of acting. You know, you got singers, you got, you know, the whole nine. Now, and like, so, let me ask a, a dumb quote. You say I do dumb <laughs> questions. So are you and RuPaul good friends? Um, no. I know, yeah, saying, but you know, it's not. Think that because, yeah, like it's not that, like I see what you were getting at, of course. And I mean, a trans woman and a drag queen is like, a, you know what I mean? Like it's a huge difference and that's a whole different conversation. But... Um, I think that first of all, because of our age brackets, like she would be more of like a motherly figure, if anything. Um, um, but I have the utmost respect for Rue, like especially in a time for me growing up, there wasn't much representation. So I would say that she was one of the people that I would look at. And I mean, like, though I may not have wanted to take her identical path, it was the closest thing to gain inspiration from. So would you say Laverne Cox opened the doors for the younger girls? Yes, yeah, uh, uh, yes. I think that what she's done for the community is amazing. She's a trailblazer. She is a sweetheart. I would consider her my friend. And yes, I think that what she's done, I think that it's crazy because it's almost like the rap game, you know? Like, it's so amazing how there can be so many male rappers and nobody says a thing. Mm-hmm. But now there's two or three female rappers and there's constant comparisons as if it can only be one. I feel like sometimes with the trans community, it's like that as well. Like, why can't we have multiple girls who represent multiple things, you know? No, now, who I else is out that we don't know about? I mean, because you hear about the people that get yeah. promoted the most. Yes. Well, there um, is a show called Pose. I'm sure you've heard of the show Pose. Right? Showtime, right? Um, No. Wait. Oh, FX? Yes, okay. it's FX. I knew it was a premium channel. Come on here, crack. Listen. You got <laughs> to check out I'll Pose. I'll be behind on everything. You gotta like, check I've seen it the commercials out. for it, It's though. a great show. It has the biggest transgender cast. So there's girls on there like my sister Angelica Ross. There's India Moore, 
there's Dominique Jackson, there's uh, like Hallie, and I mean, so many great characters, but it's just time for us to come out and to be bold and to stand together. But you I'm know? seeing more um, African-American trans than white. Are they out? Where are they? Well, I don't know. I'm black. <laughs> I know that, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, because you would normally think that, because, you know. Um, but no, 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 no. There's been white transgender women um, who have been on TV and who have been out. There's um, like, uh, like women like Candace Kane. There's Jamie Clayton um, from Caitlyn Sense Jenner. 8. Well, she's not on nothing yet. Well, Caitlyn's, Caitlyn's trans. No, she ain't trans. This girl got a wig on. Really? Hey, hey, I thought hey, she hey, got hey. the surgery. She identifies as trans, oh, Gary, okay. so we're going to be respectful. Okay, and then Chaz Bono, sharing Sonny yes, Bono's kid. Yes. There's a couple of white people out there that just, you know, be, you know But you black. don't hear them on big TV shows, you know. I haven't anyway, so I guess I just been wrong. Maybe, but my point is just that there's room for everyone. Yeah. And, I, right. and I have to say, like, <laughs> if I had no idea, mm-hmm. like, I mean... I don't know if like you attributed this to your workout routine right. or just if your doctor was dope. I read you eat a pound of fried food every week and like <laughs> you know you got some ill metabolism thing going yeah. on. Like the um not the contradiction, but the the struggle, if I may say. Like, you know, some maybe guys approach you not knowing what your story is. Yeah. How long down the road before you be like, hey, listen, before you be like, you know, run this line on me, I gotta let you know. Or is that even a conversation it's had? Um, you know, in introductions. Um, it's like I'm not gonna walk around with the megaphone saying that I'm trans. Thank you. Because I don't have to. No. Um, um, but I'm also not going to mislead anyone. So if it ever gets to the point, because I'm a good judge, you know what I mean, of character, and I believe I have a good judgment. So like before it gets to the point where it's inappropriate or where I'm um, like I feel that it's misleading, then I would tell them. But it's not like I'm gonna meet every guy at the bar and be like, "Hey, I'm transgender." Like. No, if it yeah. gets deep, because every guy at the bottom tell you, "Hey, I'm gay, straight or <laughs> Oh yes, or anything else that exactly. they're doing. So, be, you know, like if it gets there, then it gets there. I literally would buy you seven drinks before I would, you know, like I would have been so many drinks in before <laughs> I even realized that. Why, you know, Thank like, you. but no, like I mean, you. No, but you wouldn't have realized at all. And I'm a terrible. <laughs> I I worked with him for three years before I realized this situation. Thank you. I'm my my antenna is <laughs> broke. I got bad radar. Like. <laughs> Bad radar. Like, when somebody told me Gary was gay, I was like, are you... No. And, and I keep telling and I am not gay or straight, am I? I'm confused. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I just thought he was a Southern gentleman. You know, like, yeah. it, it, there's a thing sometimes. So, star Wednesday nights. At 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Uh, please Fox. mark your calendars. How many episodes we got left before we done? We are going to have, I think it's like eight or nine. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. a whole season. Oh, yeah. We have 18 this season. Have we already been renewed for next season? Not yet. Okay. So, Amaya, what's next for you? Are, I, are you doing a book, honey? Yes, or? I am. I'm writing my first book. It's called Memoirs of a Mermaid. Um, the release date is May 27th, but pre-sales are going to start next month. And I'm so excited. I mean, I'm so excited to to not only tell my story, but it's a journey. You know what I mean? People, people who have followed me or who have kept up with my story have seen me come a long way, yo. Like, I remember there were times when I was on Instagram and people was like, oh, she's just an Instagram girl, you know? Oh, Oh, she's not, you know what I'm saying? Why y'all living for her or why? Like, it's just so crazy to document my journey and to look back and to see the growth. And I'm so excited to share that with everyone because I think um, that what I want people to know is that, like, anything is possible. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned Instagram. What was the thing that got you popping? Um, it was Instagram. It wasn't like it was Instagram, but it was social media. Like basically I started walking balls, balls, like the underground ballroom scene and community is what they document on the TV show pose. But it's like a uh, uh, like a competition mixed with like a fashion show, but they have cash prizes. So it's like a battle. Yes. Yes. Okay. And those battles are sometimes like recorded and they were put onto YouTube. So when I first started walking, I was like 17. I was extremely beautiful. And I mean, people began to talk about that. Um, that led into MySpace, which led into Instagram, which led into Real Housewives, which led into Star. I mean, it was a lot more in between it, but it was just me posting pictures and um, kind of documenting my life. Like I was I'm known for fancy hairstyles, a different color hair, like amazing makeup and stuff like that. But I really utilize my platform 
and took advantage of it to promote myself and to get out there. Now, you would know? you ever dust off the title belt and the crown and go back out there and compete again? Oh, yeah. Really? I mean, if the price is right, baby, then anything is possible. Like, I mean, how much money are we talking here? Like, how I've much can you win? I won $5,000 at once for FaZe. Really? Oh, yeah. So if they give away 10 or more, she might slide through to come grab it. All right, man. She's still ready to compete for the best. <laughs> Speaking of things, what is it like to work with Miss Campbell, honey? Oh, my goodness. So she... Um, She's amazing first, oh, but yeah, out of is. all of my co-stars, I think that that was the one that I had butterflies the most. My queen, of course, um, queen and I are so close and work so closely together. And then my Patty being my grandmother, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm her baby. But Na oh my God, Naomi is just, she's one of the most regal people that I've ever seen. She, um, she doesn't walk, she floats. <laughs> so sweet and it's like you know me being in the industry I know how you give people their space and their time and I mean just how to carry myself around people like that and I think that she noticed that and we wind up becoming very very close and I'm just thankful for it to to look at my Instagram or my messages or something and see something from her it's like this is motherfucking Naomi Campbell yes, Yo, isn't it ill sometimes when you like look around and be like yo this is really happening. Yeah. I got their numbers. Did she send you a picture of her new young piece allegedly that she dating? Here you go, Gary. <laughs> Here you go. They say Miss Campbell got her a good young man this go around. She honey. might. She deserves it. She can have whatever she wants, right? Mm -hmm. She's Naomi. <laughs> so, in this point in the game, is Amaya Scott single? Technically. What's technically, technically? Like technically. in the middle of a breakup or? Um, I, um, I'm dating. So I wanted to think for a moment. That's why I paused to think, am I dating anyone special, uh, like special enough to be called out? And no, I'm not. So I'm technically single. I'm just focused on my career right now. Um, but I have, you know, some great friends. All right, baby. That's what the Hollywood girls say. <laughs> some great friends, honey. You better say that. I'm going to start using bitch. Oh, I got some great friends. I have friends. some great friends. You know? uh -huh. Yo, you and like, like the white girls say, I'm multiple dating. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I'm dating loosely, no, um, like no complications. Well, not loosely physically, but we're just dating. You know, like what I've done in the past, um, like I've met someone that I've liked and then we'll just jump right into like a relationship and then we'd get to know each other. And that's backwards. Like I want... To get to know people. I am older. I mean, well, hell, I'm 31. I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the point where I, I think that relationships are different. Like, I don't have time to waste. So before I sign myself up, plus there are like a full-time job. Like a bitch slightly got a bad sure temper. That line's to memorize. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Just a lot. You got to make sure they secure and make sure and they ain't worried about what you got and what you got, honey, a little bit more than them. Mm -hmm. All that. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot. So in your younger years, you would say you was a little bit more aggressive? Oh, yes. Like a serial monogamous. I, I felt like I had to be in a relationship. And I think that that's what I'm I'm happy about now because I started to give that love to myself, yo. Yeah. Well, I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> Gary, you have to. I guess I have to because I've been complaining. I'm like, this is ridiculous being in Atlanta all these years and still not in a steady. You just have to give that love to yourself and then that other love is going to come. Okay, I'm going to read your book. <laughs> <laughs> And the book is called? It's called Memoirs of a Mermaid. And are we taking pre-orders right now? Is that a thing? No, pre-orders will begin next month. Okay. And it will be released in May. So why do they call you head crack? I shoot dice. I thought she was about lot. to say you shoot people. No, I don't shoot people. <laughs> that would be headshot. Um, <laughs> no, nah, like, you know, like, so I read somewhere that you at some point did live in New York, right? Um, oh, well, I was born in Manhattan, okay. but I was really, really young, though. But in New Orleans, they shoot dice, right? They shoot crabs in the alley yes, on Canal Street yes, by the Popeyes. Yes, and people too. So whenever you roll a four, five, six, right, they call that a head crack. <laughs> okay. So like it's like winning. It's like yelling domino because you got the last joint. Okay. It's like having that last Uno card. You hit somebody with the draw four. Gotcha. You cannot beat a four, five, six in a game of crabs. Gotcha. You get to take everybody's money, and that's uh, I've been blessed my you entire career. You have to teach you how to shoot dice. I want to hustle something. You know what I mean? You gonna have to take a knee. No capping it, but you got to take a knee. And like you know, it's, it's all about the <laughs> angles and just how, how you oh, yeah. let them things roll out. I'll school you. You go on the star set and take everybody money while y'all waiting to shoot your next I'm scene. I'm so about it. Because it's so hurry up and wait. <laughs> and then you can adjust the rules for the people that don't know and you can win every time. That's why I used to do oh, high school. I was robbing see, white I'm folks. So, I'm so happy that I came here today. I, like, I'm learning things. Hey, man, that's what life is about, <laughs> learning things. I felt like we learned some things today. Yeah. We're happy for you. Memoirs of a Mermaid. Yes. Pre-orders next month. Star every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Check your local listings. Anything else we need to look out for? Are you rapping? 
Um, no, no, no. I'm not rapping, but they could just look out for me, baby. Things are always coming, and I'm not going to stop. On the way out, why did you decide to drop King? Why did I? Because I feel like when I first... Uh, like, it was a tricky situation at first. My page was deleted. I needed to come up with something different. And it was like a spur of the moment thing. And I do feel like women can still be kings. But I just want to be a Maya Scott. Yeah. You know? Keep it simple. Yeah, like, there's nothing wrong with it. I, King Amaya was a bad bitch, and she is one. But I think I just need to, I like, evolve into a Ima- uh, uh, like into. Amaya Scott. It's like the caterpillar. Yeah, he got me wanna, over here chuckling. Keep, He's so funny. Amaya want to keep the soft because King Amaya like to beat your ass, honey. And, and yeah. you know, see, now Gary, uh-huh. you know that too. Things have to change. I have yes. to change. I Amaya King Amaya is popping knuckles. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Amaya Scott, like she coming through with like poison grace. Yeah. Yeah. Winning underground battles. <laughs> you know, all that good stuff, man. Well, yo, thank you so much for breezing thank through. Thank you so Wish much. Wish you the best of success. I know the road you walk in is not the easiest one to walk down, mm-hmm. but thank you for your bravery. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. My Scott's in the building. Head crack after hours. We ghost. The Ricky Smiley Morning Show.